Uh, so I'm Matthias Olson from Emerging Cooking Solutions, and uh, I'm going to tell a little bit about what we're doing and also share my experience of where we have course corrected and where we have had to change the way that we could move forward. And I think for, for I would say for pretty much anyone wanting to start an inclusive business, it has to start with an idea that you really, really kind of fall in love with. I mean, that's, that happened to myself and it happened to our colleagues here in Zambia and we strangely had pretty much the same idea. For myself, it was actually, I remember one night surfing on the internet and thinking there has to be a solution to climate change. I mean, that is not about just minimizing and doing less bad and kind of feeling guilty about things. And I stumbled across something called biochar and kind of started to research on the fact that we can actually move carbon from the atmosphere where we have way too much to the soil where there is too little. So this is how the idea of making pellets for cook stoves started. And we haven't incorporated it yet into our business because it's a little bit too obscure, but it's on our pipeline when we reach break even, we'll pick up, up that idea and see what we can do with it. But for now, we have a lot of impact we can generate anyway. What we do is more or less this. We produce fuel pellets for cooking. And uh, our idea is that we can produce it and sell it cheaper than the alternative. And the fuel is also better when powered in these gasifying cook stoves. Um, on the picture you see a stove made by Philips. It's produced in Lesotho. And uh, in the beginning we made our own cook stoves. Uh, it was quite a hard work to do that. And we realized that we're never going to make them as good as Philips can do them. And also we can't make them as, as uh, cheaply, although our were actually cheaper. But we, that was one of our big realizations was that let's just focus on the fuel. Let's buy the stoves that are available on the market and then we'll find a solution that we can scale up. Because we have a lot of issues with scaling anyways. Setting up a pellet factory is a big thing in itself. So we target people that have existing purchasing power for cooking fuel. This is, was our original idea and that has remained true for now also. It means that we target people who already have money and who can spend less money on a better fuel. So that sounds fantastic. Uh, and our uh, obstacle and our challenge is to get these high quality stoves to reach the people. Um, and uh, it may sound counterintuitive, but we kind of went for the best stove we could find, uh, also the more expensive stove. And the reason we do that is because if you just look a little bit at the lifetime, cost and lifetime savings. The best of is also the most efficient. And in that way, the lifetime cost becomes actually drastically lower. And it means that we can have higher margins on the pellets. We can sell them at a higher per ton price. This is our production team. We have installed capacity for 3,000 tons per year. We're making very high quality pellets. It's been a long journey. It's taking us many years. Um, but um, we are not worried at all about production anymore. This is one of our stove users. And uh, this is our impact statement, um, which shows that we have strong impact on both environment, replacing, when we replace charcoal, we have strong impact on, very strong impact on environment, on health. Interestingly, people save money, women save money by choosing a stove that cooks faster. And um, I would make, like to make an anal analogy with a washing machine. I mean, imagine doing you know, laundry for a big family, it will take a lot of time. And I know that when the washing machine came into Western societies, it really transformed society also culturally. It's quite interesting. So I think that cooking stove that saves time can also create to very positive social changes. Um, and for the government, uh, who we hope will cooperate more deeply with us, um, we always say that we bring a informal sector into the formal sector. We generate new fresh tax revenue uh, which they don't get on pellet sales, on charcoal sales. So these are some uh, pictures from the past. Uh, our colleagues here, Sonta Kauti, has, uh, is one of the founders and he, had, uh, he was the one who really convinced us to come to Zambia. We came through Swedish embassy visit here in 2010 and um, since then we've been working together and three of our, our, our other colleagues are here today also. Um, so 
just to go through, when preparing for this presentation, I was thinking what were all the things that we were thinking was going to be problems and what, what actually have been our challenges. And interestingly, a lot of the things actually I can actually tick off here and say that they haven't been, uh, we have managed to find ways and solutions to them, but I'll also highlight what, where we had to change course and what was the most challenging. So we focused a lot on pellet production. We had a lot of thoughts and uh, concerns about availability of uh, raw materials. Could we produce high quality pellets? What about packaging distribution? And also could we sell them at the, at the price that was actually gonna fuel the whole business? Because again, we are selling the stoves at cost or below cost. In some areas we, we, we're selling them below cost so that we can recover that in pellet sales. So in, on the pellet production side, we've been very positively, uh, it's been very difficult and very hard, but basically we feel that we have uh, come very far and we are not uh, challenged by it, by it at this time. On the stove thing, uh, we made our 50 stoves or so, uh, and then we realized how can we scale this up? It will take us enormous investment, time, resources to scale this up from 50 to 500 or 2,000 or 10,000. And then we found eventually when the Philips stove came around, which was only less than a year ago, we were clear that this is the way to go. Let's buy something off the shelf and let's focus on setting up the systems and integration and all these other things, which is uh, enough challenge in itself. Um, and we also realized that there's not much margins in the, in the, in the stove sales, so uh, we might just as well um, not put our effort on that. So right now we are working with a Philips stove and we're working with an institutional stove. We have that one in a uh, uh, orphanage here in Lusaka and they're very happy they save a lot of money on the fuel. It's a video on YouTube, there's a link at the end, you can see if you want. We're also experimenting with cheaper stoves, uh, that is uh, a third of the cost, but they are not quite as good as the Philips stove. So this is a phase of really a lot of experimentation for us. Um, and the third category of challenges that we have encountered is on the sales side. And uh, one big question was, of course, are people going to use it? And um, I put yes here. I would put with some reservation. We had some issues with the first users, and we take that on ourselves, basically, that we didn't, uh, we didn't show how our product worked closely. We, we sold to a forestry company that we worked with, to their employees through payroll deduction programs. And uh, we basically sold it to men. And the, uh, the women who were going to use the stove uh, were not really informed how it worked. So we had some drawbacks there. But now we are really focusing on working with women's groups and really trying to interact more deeply with the end users. Um, but basically, uh, what we found is that um, our product is extremely attractive on the market, uh, but there is the threshold of entry, which is the challenge. Um, so we have an offer which is attractive on the consumable side, but we have to find ways to finance and uh, get through that initial threshold. And. Um, we also, the distribution, everyone told us that um, you have to focus on the distribution, last mile distribution and so on. What we found, we kind of did kind of reverse engineering. I went to the um, uh, big uh, millimeal mills here where they make um, corn flour, which is everyone uses that a lot. And then we realized that two bags of millimeal, two bags of pellets, more or less the same price, more or less the same weight. So we just have to follow that track that supply chain and see what are the margins they are getting, it's bulk handling and so on. And to our, you know, good surprise, we found that retail margins on Millimeal are extremely low. S somehow it's workable uh, for that. So um, with that, I'm going to turn to the next slide, um, where we're coming into the, uh, the part with um, where we're now looking very experimentally at many different ways of financing the stove. We're working with microfinance institutes. Uh, we are dropping the price ourselves. Uh, we are trying cheaper stoves. Uh, we are working through women's groups. I was in a church yesterday uh, speaking to 600 people. 
asking if they, and a lot of people wanted the stove, but they have to then sign up and collect money themselves. So um, I'm sure you're gonna see a lot of results um, from our experience here, but it's, it's very exciting and also very um, humbling to find that we have to find uh, the ways that work in this particular culture. So to sum up, basically, we abandoned the idea of making the stoves. That was a very good decision, and we freed up a lot of resources to do that. Uh, we have realized that we need to target more low-income people because our payroll deduction programs went to white-collar workers and engineers who used the stove as a backup. We want to find people who use it full-time, who buy charcoal. So now we're focusing, focusing very much on the compounds, on the uh, lower income levels where people often don't have a job but they have purchasing power for charcoal. And then also the institutional stoves has come up now as a very interesting way of selling a lot of pellets which we're also going to look into. And uh, with that I want to thank you very much and close here. Thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you very much and Matthias for that presentation. Are there any pressing questions quickly? Right, I, I had one for you, Matthias, if you, excuse me, Duncan. Have you worked out um, how long it would take for the consumer boards to pay for the stove? Yeah, I mean, it, it's roughly six months, something like that. So our original idea was like, uh, let's actually, we retain the ownership of the stoves, and we simply kind of, we take a small commitment fee just as an insurance and let people use it. Um, we don't have the cash flow for that. It's a very, we would love to try that at some point, but right now we can't do that. But we definitely seeing if we lower the price of the stove even to half, you know, we think we can recover it in three months. But we experiment carefully, let's put it that way. Right. 